Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number four of our TCW series here in TW 2020. We are on to Total Wrestling for January week three and appreciate all the great feedback thus far on the series and a lot more exciting stuff here as we make the build towards Malice and Wonderland. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you up front, not going to be a ton of matches announced for Malice and Wonderland on this episode. You already know one in our tag team title match, but we're kind of using this as more of a Clash of the Champions type style um, pay-per-view this year. Now, next year, it will be a little bit different. But this year, because we only had four episodes to build to this, this may feel like a little bit of a lesser card um, versus, you know, the usual big-time pay-per-view feels, which this is, I think it's rated as one of our, you know, I don't know if it's a historic or whatever the the event importance is. But I just want to let you know that up front. Next year, um, once we get to it on the, the 2021 portion, of the event schedule it will be a much more kind of important event but for now we're just kind of trying to put some things together so this may feel if you're a wcw fan um clash of the champions-esque versus uh, an actual full-blown you know eight match pay-per-view with every match being in this long rivalry because we've only really started the, the save for four four episodes of the show it's going to be by the time we get to the pay-per-view so just want to let you know that up front but let's get into this edition here as we get the video footage, we had the cliffhanger on the last episode. It was the syndicate um, had beaten down Aaron Andrews, Wolf Hawkins, and bloodied him, bloodied the, the title, just all kinds of stuff after uh, we saw that Eddie Chandler and Nate Johnson had locked the baby faces in their locker room. And so, after we, when we went off the air, we heard Kyle Rhodes saying that the, the locker room had been unlocked. They had broken the, the chain. So, we get the video footage, and we see what happened last week um as after we went off the air and that is sammy bach chance fortune daryl divine t-bone they're all coming out and we start to get kind of a brawl here uh with the syndicate doesn't last very long the syndicate eventually gets out of there the more important aspect is these guys checking on aaron andrews so not much of a brawl here these guys barely <laughs> sort of get involved before the syndicate um retreats a little bit so that's kind of what we get the video footage here 73 for this one, uh, Sammy, poor uh, improvising dialogue. That's all right. We don't always get those notes, but it is what it is. So after that, we start the actual um, portion of the episode here. And it's worth noting we are in San Antonio. So uh, that will be important here for an upcoming thing that we have. But um, it, we have we come on the air, and it's Kyle Rhodes sharing an update on our TCW World Heavyweight Champion, Aaron Andrews, who was just you know beaten down, bloodied by Wolf Hawkins and the Syndicate on last week's episode and Rhodes just shares that um you know the, the medical team are, are are saying that that Andrews is out of action um indefinitely and so that is kind of what Rhodes announces that uh, Andrews is you know taking a pretty bad beating from Wolf Hawkins they're still surveying all of his injuries and so for the time being they can't announce the timetable for Andrews's return uh but that you know as of right now he's out indefinitely uh, until the doctors have a better idea of the the severity of his injuries and, and see how he's going to heal from those. So that is kind of Rhodes updating us on our TCW World Heavyweight Champion. Um, so the syndicate take out Aaron Andrews for the time being. 81 for this segment. All right, but after that, uh, here comes Sammy Buck. So Rhodes is over at the announce desk um, announcing what's going on with Andrews, but here comes Sammy Buck. And he tells Rhodes, you know, come on in the ring. And that's when we hear Sammy, you know, he's kind of going off here. He's pissed. Of course, he was one of the baby faces locked in the locker room. He was given the rock concert when they were <laughs> locked in and they were, you know, going out trying to help Andrews. And so Bach now is, you know, very angry. And he just says, you know, he doesn't have time to rock right now. Uh, that's because he's issuing a challenge tonight to Wolf Hawkins and the syndicate to meet them in the ring. Sammy Bach chance fortune and daryl divine they're going to team up he wants to take on wolf he wants to take on nate johnson and eddie chandler so sammy bach issuing a challenge to wolf and the syndicate uh, we will see if they accept but uh, bach pissed off here as a friend of babyface uh, aaron andrews so 74 for this one all right match wise we start things off with a san antonian himself dazzling dave diamond makes his debut here in our series and so uh, we're going to just say that Dazzling Dave is uh, a Texas native, which he is. We're going to say he's from San Antonio. So uh, this is <laughs> Dazzling Dave wrestling in front of his hometown fans here, as uh, it is Dave Diamond getting the win over Matt Hawking, who was in our main event last week, lost Aaron Andrews. As we know, this gets a 66. Pretty good stuff, uh, all things considered. 
Dave, not exactly with the most stamina, uh, as I learned when I was booking this match. So we made it about an eight-minute match. Um, yeah, not much more to add other than Dave getting a nice baby face win here. Dave's a little more over than I thought he would be. Uh, I think he's like in the low 60s or something. So uh, we brought him back here in San Antonio, his hometown, and he gets to win over Matt Hawking. So afterwards, Dave has gotten the win, and <laughs> what happens? Well, Dave's starting to head out of there. Freddie Huggins comes down, and Freddie's just, you know, just yelling at Dave, telling him to get out of there. And Freddie and Matt Hawking uh, are kind of, you know, combined yet again, as we saw at the end of last week's episode with uh, Freddie trying to get involved, ultimately costing Hawking the match against Andrews. But um, so these two, as you'll see, are kind of a pair that we're, <laughs> we're using. Uh, and we mentioned last week why that is. But Freddie Huggins comes out. He wants Kyle Rhodes back in the ring. Poor Kyle. He's just, he's all over the place. Um, but we bring Kyle Rhodes back in and Freddie Huggins, um, then just total heel mode here. 71 for the segment. Good stuff across the board here in terms of our notes. It is Huggins saying that he wants Kyle Rhodes and he wants everybody to know that Aaron Andrews is too much of a coward to face him. Now, of course, this is coming off of the announcement that Aaron Andrews has basically been taken out by the syndicate uh, in no way, shape, or form as he cleared to wrestle right now. But Huggins running him down, knowing that he's not here, the ultimate heel move. Um, so... Huggins just saying, you know, last week he brought out T-Bone. That's because Aaron Andrews was too scared to face him. Uh, and he says that he's going to get his hands on that TCW World Heavyweight Championship. But he does have a match coming up next. And Freddie decides to run down Danny Fonzarelli, talking about how, um, you know, basically he shouldn't even be wrestling against the Fonz uh, because the Fonz hasn't won a match um, in years. And so Huggins just running him down. So we do get into the match. And if you thought Fonz was going to end the losing streak, He's not, because Freddie gets the win, uh, our two sunglassed friends here, um, as Freddie uh, does get the win in 934. Pretty good, I mean, overall, 73, we'll take it. Um, but the usual chemistry bonus with Huggins and uh, Laura Catherine here, uh, LCH, uh, so we've got the usual chemistry there, but Freddie gets a win, so another heel win here for Freddie, uh, although coming off the loss to uh, T-Bone on last week's episode. So Freddie gets the win, the Fonz continues his losing streak here for now. So, all right. Then speaking of T-Bone, T-Bone's up next as uh, we get a match between T-Bone and Maverick. And it's T-Bone scoring his second straight victory. He gets the win in 10-11 with a power slam over Maverick. This gets a 70, so another good match, I think, overall. Uh, we did set this as a wild brawl because we have to have one of those on every episode. And I thought this would probably be the one because um, T-Bone's a brawler. And so we just kind of use this one. As the wild brawl, I kind of wanted to to see if we could pull it off from a stamina issue, but but T-Bone's not bad on that. So, yeah, so we get kind of everything there. I'm um, curious if there's anything of note here. I don't remember if Maverick. So T-Bone penalized for inconsistency, but they do go all out, give us a 70. So T-Bone with the victory here on this episode. And now, afterwards, we get uh, the Center Society. And it's Eddie Peake coming out with the entire Center Society here. Kyle Rhodes back again. Um, look, Kyle Rhodes has, I think he's rated 70 popularity. He's got good microphone skills, so we're going to use him uh, as in this role, and it's working so far. So 69, nice rating here uh, for this one. As Peak comes out with the Center Society, and they're all here, and it's basically just Eddie Peak, you know, cutting a promo on uh, Tana and Mighty Mo, just saying that the Center Society is tired of playing around with these two guys. They're going to finish them once and for all uh, at Malice in Wonderland. So um, we, we know that match is official. It is going to be Killer Shark and Titan defending the titles against Tana and Mo. Uh, and so that's just kind of, you know, Eddie Peak pushing them. And now he says, but before we get there, um, you know, Shark and Titan are going to completely destroy these two guys over here in the ring. So we are going to have a match with our champions, non-title match here with this one. And yes, they're not going to lose this one <laughs> as uh, it is the behemoths, Killer Shark and Titan getting the win over Elliot Thomas and Dean Daniels here, 448. So a squash match, essentially. Um, Killer Shark with a big bite on Elliot Thomas. That's a big bite there. So 52, like I said, not a great match, but, um, you know, <laughs> this is what it is. I mean, these two, you guys know, if you play with TCW, all about the menace for these fine folks here. Um, and these two are just kind of, I don't know how to say it, they're just undercard Sort of, um, yeah, I don't want to call them jobbers, but, I mean, look, Dean Daniels been around a while. Thomas, I think, was in one of our either hot young prospects or something like that. So, But overall, you know, these are our champs, and our champs get the win heading into, uh, like I said, that match here in a couple weeks at Mouse in Wonderland against Mo and Tana. Speaking of Mo and Tana, well, 
Here they come, because these four are in the ring having their fun. Mo and Tana are not ready to wait. They're ready to come out to fight. And so Eddie Peaks just kind of, you know, standing on the outside. Shark, Titan, and Booth are here. Um, and so these two come out, but before they start to charge at them, they've got backup, because it's none other than dazzling Dave Diamond here in San Antonio, making his way out. Huge reaction from the crowd uh, for the hometown man here, Dazzling Dave, as Dave comes out, and that is when we kind of get the three-on-three here with Eddie Peake kind of staying out of the way uh, in this one. So we'll have a little bit of a brawl here between Shark, Titan, and Booth, uh, and then, of course, Mighty Mo, Tana, and Dazzling Dave here. So 72, and you guys probably know what that's leading to uh, here coming up. But um, that is where we are. We get you know scripts to follow. I think I may have set them. I don't know if I said it, Charisma Entertainment, something like that, but I don't think I actually put it as fighting now that I think about it. But um oh well <laughs> we'll just say they were talking the entire time that way you can decide you know tana did well but the other two did not but nonetheless um dazzling dave here in san antonio doesn't just get a win he comes out as a reinforcement uh for uh, our tag team challengers here uh in this one so 72 and like i said you guys probably know what that's setting up here on a future <laughs> episode so all right and now back to the joshua taylor squashing um you know <laughs> developmental talent tour that's what this is as taylor gets another win over developmental talent here 49 for this one he, beat, he defeats jalen martins uh 435 butterfly lock does it so not a lot to add here i mean martins had an 18 i think joey philly last week had a 21 so yeah both these guys not really lending themselves to doing too much but we are like we said just kind of using this as a a short-term thing um, to have some of these developmental guys come up and, and have these matches with Joshua Taylor. And so that's kind of what it comes down to. Obviously, we're going to get some penalties. Uh, we did do storytelling here, so that didn't help the rating too. Uh, but we have to have that on every show, and this was just one that I, I put it there. So the inexperience of Martins, of course, plays into it. But overall, uh, I know this doesn't really do Taylor a ton of favors in terms of having these lower-rated matches, but for now, um, we, we have something in mind for Taylor moving forward. And so We'll get to that, but uh, again, we just can't rush everything all at once. So, all right, Taylor gets the win, and now we get an announcement before our main event that next week it is official. Our television title match, the TV title on the line, Greg Gage is going to defend against Benny Benson. So we kind of get some highlights here, looking at you know everything that's happened recently uh, with with everything, of course, going on. We had you know Jay Cord and Greg Gage teaming up against Benson and Fox. We've had the kind of back and forth between those four guys. So um, we have that now official. That is going to be a television title match next week on Total Wrestling. Greg Gage and Benny Benson. So we just kind of get the highlights looking at um, what's happened here to lead to that match. So 65 overall for the segment. And that is going to lead us into our main events. Yes, the Syndicate. (laughs) I know you're not surprised. They did officially accept the match against Sammy Bach and uh, Divine Fortune there. So let's see how it plays out in our main event. As it is, you guys knew this. Um, the the syndicate, Sammy, Sammy off his game here. That's not helping. I think we've had a couple notes on that, but we kind of noted that Sammy's in ring skills are going down a little bit. Wolf clearly head and shoulders above everyone. Eighty eight for the in ring. Uh, everyone else, like I said, kind of in the fifties or sixties range. But um, so seventy five for the match, and it is the syndicate getting the win over Sammy. Um, and Define Fortune. Wolf Hawkins gets the pin on Chance Fortune. So I just realized what I did here. So it is worth noting, we do have Jay Cord interfering against Sammy Bach as part of the finish, but because we didn't pin Bach, it's not going to note it here. So, um, yes. So Jay Cord getting involved. We haven't seen him all night, right? We remember back kind of to last week, or really the past couple weeks, the back and forth between Jay Cord and Sammy Bach. So we didn't have Jay Cord scheduled to wrestle it on the card, but he shows up anyways. And we have Jay get involved here um, as, you know, he kind of interferes, gets Sammy out of the way. That allows the Syndicate and Wolf um, to take advantage. And and Chance Fortune, unfortunately, comes out on the wrong side of things, uh, taking the pin here in this one. So the Syndicate get the win over the baby faces. He gets a 75. Jay Cord gets involved. um, And so that's kind of what we're, we're playing up here. But afterwards... What happens? Well, <laughs> so uh, we have kind of, you know, two tag teams facing off against each other. So Chandler and Johnson, they're fighting with Divine and Fortune. They're out of the picture, right? Um, Sammy Bach has, you know, Jay Court's kind of retreated. He he basically did what he came for. He came to interfere. He did that. So he's out of the way. 
So now we've got these three trying to sort of go after Sammy Bach. So we have Hawkins, Hammond, and Flynn trying to go after Sammy Bach. Well, here comes T-Bone. T-Bone's coming out, and T-Bone's not coming out alone because Bart Biggins is with him. So we got two more baby faces involved here. They come to make the save. Uh, so now, instead of the three-on-one, which, once again, that's what we saw last week, right, with Aaron Andrews, no, not locking in the baby faces this week. And so, um, as it is T-Bone and, and Bart Biggins coming out, they're making the save uh, for, for Sammy. So we've got kind of a three-on-three three here. Uh, as we have T-Bone going at it with Chris Flynn, uh, we got Bart Biggins going at it with Doc Hammond. So those four guys eventually kind of spill outside of the ring. And what happens? 69, nice rating for this one. Flynn performs poorly. That leaves only two men inside the ring, and that's kind of what we're pushing here, that Wolf and Sammy never cross paths in the tag team match, so they never kind of were in the ring at the same time, and now Wolf all by himself in the middle of the ring with Sammy Bach, and that is when Bach, you know, the rage kind of filling up after what Wolf did to Aaron Andrews, his friend. Uh, so Sammy starts to go at Wolf, but Wolf able to quickly get away and get out of there. Um, so that's how we go off the air with this one, a 92 segment. So this was, you know, what we were plotting is to kind of get these two at the as the final segment here. So it is Sammy, um, you know, basically <laughs> drawing the line here uh, with Wolf, and Wolf gets away. So that is how we set things up to finish up this edition of Total Wrestling. Nice way to do it with a 92 overall. Um, so overall, we get an 81 for this episode. We'll take that uh, as I think the previous two, we have 84 maybe, something like that. But you know, it was a, a six-man main event. Um, you know, we did kind of take the hit on the rating here for this just because you know, we have to get T-Bone involved, and uh, we brought Bart Biggins. Those guys are, what, 50s popularity, I guess. But, you know, we're just playing up kind of combining the baby faces and the heels here. So um, 81 for this one. We increase our popularity. That's all we care about. Um, so a, a very interesting addition with Aaron Andrews out indefinitely. Um, dazzling Dave Diamond gets involved in multiple segments. Freddie Huggins thinks Aaron Andrews is a coward. Uh, and then, of course, we kind of have the stand, the standalone stare down, if you will, uh, between Sammy Bach and Wolf Hawkins. So let's see what we get to before we wrap up. All right, so that was Total Wrestling. And before we, I mean, let's just quickly, you know, we struck goal, excellent show, struck goal, that's what we look for. Looks like a new time for SWF Supreme TV. As um, now be shown in the late night slot uh, on CANN here. Um, a blow to SWF after they'd become concerned with the quality of the shows being produced. Well, let's see what SWF did um, for Supreme TV. Positive show. So they didn't get the striking gold here. They got a 77. So we beat them in that regard, too. We'll look at the ratings here in just a minute. But um, they did have a you know quite a main event here, an 87 between Remo and, and ZWB uh, for that one. But um, still, hey, we'll, we'll take anything that get, sort of gives a big blow to um, the SWF, we'll, we'll take that at this point. So it uh, looks like they ran Louisiana too. We ran New Orleans last week. So maybe that's their problem. They didn't realize we came in with a hot show last week. But um, so uh, they got a new team, James Prudence, Mainstream Hernandez, two, two popular, I guess, workers in the Seaverse uh, over the years, I suppose. But um, so let's see what else we need to get to. We've got some mail here. Again, we'll look at the um, look at the ratings here in a second. But Sammy Box got an opinion. Matt Hawking is charismatic. You see him doing well. All right, well, we've been putting Hawking with uh, Freddie Huggins, so we'll see. We'll see how he, he does here. But back-to-back -back losses from Matt Hawking to Aaron Andrews and Dazzling Dave, so um, that's fine. J Cord, <laughs> Nick Putin needs to learn how to sell. Not worth pushing. So J Cord doesn't wrestle on this edition. All he does is interfere in the main event. But he saw enough that Nick Booth just cannot sell at all and if we really look at it i mean let's be honest here nick booth is 30 in the popularities uh, or 30 in popularity overall he's actually gone up a little bit which that's because we've had him in two matches now i guess back to back but yeah i mean it's selling 34 to 64 it's it's really not you know he's not a great seller let's just i mean jay's not wrong here so drug testing fees uh we get a 2.76 in the ratings so let's look at the actual broadcasting and see uh, what we kind of did here in terms of the rating center. So last night we get, yeah, so we we did. We outdrew uh, SWF for the first time, I guess, uh, show three into it. Hey, we'll take that. So we get an 81 rating. We did have, you know, a few more 20,000 plus more viewers overall with, uh, with that, with the viewership. So if we look at the rating, yeah, our rating was higher. So, yep. So we, we outdraw SWF. They've already had to move time slots. Hmm. 
Sorry, SWF. We're just uh, we're, we're coming right along here uh, as we we are trying to take over the world with TCW. So that's where things stand for that. Um, and yeah, like I said, guys, I always appreciate the great feedback, and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. A lot of fun stuff here um, as we we move towards Malice and Wonderland. That is going to be uh, our events here for January. I know I mentioned before the the schedule. I, I haven't decided exactly yet, so for now, we're going to kind of leave it as is. But like I mentioned, so it is a legendary show. I said historic earlier, so it's a legendary show. I think we're still going to have good enough matchups to where, you know, it's kind of that it's kind of that middle between Clash of the Champions and an actual, you know, top-tier pay-per-view. But, you know, we only had four shows. We only have four shows to build it up, so I didn't really want to rush everything too early. So, um, yeah, that kind of gives us a little more wiggle room to work with as we move towards the war to settle the score. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what we have coming up as we know. And so be sure to check out everything else on the channel, WWE, AW, exploring the C-verse. Uh, it's all there and some more new stuff on the way as well. So hit that subscribe button on the next episode of our TCW series. It will be the go home edition of total wrestling before malice in wonderland.